All right, let's talk about conditional rendering in React. Conditional rendering is how we make our components show different content based on different conditions. Maybe you want to show a login button if the user isn't logged in, or show their profile if they are. Maybe you want to show an error message only when there is an error. That is conditional rendering. In React, there are four main ways to conditionally render content, and I'm going to show you all of them. But first, let me create a user details component that we will build up throughout this lesson. Back in VS Code, in the source folder, I'll create a new file, userdetails.jsx. Here, create and export a new component called user details. So export const user details is equal to an arrow function, which returns a div user details. Now let's add some props to this component curly braces for object destructuring, and I will add a name and ease online prop. In the JSX, we'll display the name in an h3 tag and the status in a paragraph tag. h3, curly braces, bind the name prop, paragraph tag, status, colon, curly braces, ease online. Let's import and use this component in app.jsx. Command P, Navigate to app.jsx, import user details from dot slash user details, and we will invoke it once with the props name is equal to Bruce Wayne and is online is equal to true. And then again with the props name is equal to Clark Kent and is online is equal to false. With our dev server running, if you check the browser, you can see we have Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent rendering, but the status is empty. Let's improve this with conditional rendering. The first approach and the most straightforward way to conditionally render is with good old if statements. Let me walk you through the code. Let's start without any JSX. Now within the function body, we use the if statement and we check if is online is true. If it is true, we return a div tag with h3 that renders the name, a span tag that renders the text online with a green status indicator, a paragraph tag available for chat, and a button that says send message. And after the if condition, we can return a div tag with an h3 that renders the name, a span tag that renders offline, a paragraph tag that says not available, and small text, check back later. So depending on the value of is online, we're going to return different JSX. You could technically use an else statement here, but it's not necessary. Check the browser, and you will see that the JSX is rendered differently based on the value of is online. Bruce Wayne is available for chat and you can send a message. Clark Kent is offline, is not available, you can check back later. But sometimes, based on a condition, you may not want to render anything at all. In such cases, you can return null. Let me add another prop called hide offline. And in the function body, if hide offline is true and the user is offline, so not online. We won't render anything. Return null. Otherwise, we return the JSX we already have. This return null is React's way of saying render nothing. If we add hide offline to Clark Kent's props and check the browser, we will see that the component is not rendered at all. But here's the thing. There's quite a bit of duplication in the JSX. If, for example, you have to add a class to the name h3 tag, you would have to add it to both the online and offline cases. There is a better way. And that brings us to the second approach, conditional rendering using the ternary operator. Instead of returning completely different JSX, we can conditionally render parts of it. So back in user details, we can add one return statement with a div tag with an h3 that renders the name, a span tag that uses the ternary operator 
on X online to render online or offline a paragraph tag that uses the ternary operator once again on X online to render available for chat or not available. And finally, the ternary operator on X online, but this time to render different HTML elements. A button if is online is true so we can send a message otherwise the small element check back later we can remove the other return statements we use curly braces inside the span tag we check if is online is true and render online as a text otherwise offline paragraph tag we use curly braces to conditionally render the text and then we start with a curly brace check if is online is true and conditionally render either a button element or the small element. We went from two completely separate returns to one return with conditional parts. If we check the browser, we see the same output as before, but the code is much cleaner. We went from two completely separate returns to one return with conditional parts. The ternary operator is like a compact if-else statement that you can use right inside your JSX. Let's now move on to the third approach, the logical AND operator, which is just a more specific case of the ternary operator. When you want to render some JSX when the condition is true or render nothing otherwise, the AND operator is perfect. Let me add some new props to show you how it works. I'll add two new props to the user details component, ease premium and ease new user. In the JSX, I want to show badges next to the name, but only if the user is premium or new. I don't want to show anything if they're not. So after rendering the name, another pair of curly braces, we check if is premium is true. And if it is, we render a span tag with a star. Similarly, in the next line, curly braces, if is new user is true, we render a span tag with the party emoji. You can read this as if is premium, then render the premium badge. Otherwise, render nothing. Same with the new user badge. The AND operator is perfect for these show or hide scenarios. In app.jsx, for Bruce Wayne, we'll pass is premium is equal to true and is new user also equal to true. Save the file, check the browser, and you will see the badges are rendered based on the values of is premium and is new user. Now, one thing to watch out for with the AND operator is when working with numbers. If you do something like messages.length and render a span tag, but messages.length is zero, React will actually render the number zero. You always have to be explicit. Messages.length is greater than zero, only then render messages.length. This is a very common beginner mistake. All right, the fourth and final approach for conditional rendering is to use variables for complex logic. Let's say our user details component is getting more complex and we want to show different content based on the user's role. When things get complex, it's often cleaner to prepare your content with variables. Let me add a new prop called role. So role, destructured from the props object. Now, in the component, we can define a variable called role badge and assign it a value based on the role. Let's assume the role can be either admin, moderator, or VIP. We can start with a null value and assign it a value based on the role. If role is equal to admin, then role badge is equal to a span tag with the key emoji and admin text. Else if role is equal to moderator, role badge is equal to a span tag with an emoji and the text moderator. Else if role is equal to VIP, role badge is equal to a span tag with an emoji and the text VIP. Now we can use this role badge component in the JSX. After is new user, bind role badge. In app.jsx, add the role prop for Bruce Wayne, 
and set it equal to admin, set Clark Kent to online and add the role prop is equal to VIP. If we save the file, check the browser, we see the role badge is rendered based on the role admin for Bruce Wayne and VIP for Clark Kent. You can see this approach is super clean. We are preparing all the complex logic before the return statement. Then our JSX stays simple and readable. All right, let's recap our four ways of conditional rendering. If statements, great for completely different renders or returning null. Ternary operator, perfect for either or situations. And operator, ideal for show or hide scenarios. And variables, best for complex logic that makes your JSX messy. The key is picking the right tool for the right job. Start simple, and as your conditions get more complex, move to the approach that keeps your code the most readable. Now, there is actually a fifth way introduced in React 19.2 called the activity component. It gives you a new way to hide parts of your UI and then bring them back later without fully removing them from the DOM. We will discuss this later in the course once we've built up a few more building blocks to understand what's really happening behind the scenes. As for our next topic, we're going to look at rendering lists in React, how to take an array of data and turn it into a list of components.